In this video, we're going to learn how to use ClickHouse to query the metadata of Parquet files. So let's come over to the terminal and we're going to launch ClickHouse local. And the data set that we're going to be using is called Diffusion DB on Hugging Face. And it has the metadata for 14 million images generated by the stable Diffusion Gen AI tool. And so if we click through to the files, we can see there are at the bottom some Parquet files, and we're going to be looking at metadata hyphen large dot parquet. So it's 900 megabytes of stuff. So I've downloaded this and kind of cleaned it up a bit so that it's a bit more interesting to work with. And we're going to call the from file, pass in the name of that file, and then we're going to pass in the type parquet metadata and then select star. Now, if we run this, it will come back with all the metadata, but there's a lot of stuff. So I'm just going to tweak this a little bit. And we're going to first describe it so we can see what's going to come back. Uh, and then we'll tell it, hey, we just want to get a compact output from that describe. And you can see it comes back. So the we've got at the bottom, we've got row groups and columns. Uh, we'll look at those a little bit later. And then if we scroll up, we've got the total compressed size, the uncompressed size, the metadata size, the version, the number of row groups, the number of rows, and then the number of columns. So let's update that query. So let's get rid of the settings at the bottom. We're going to exclude the columns and the row groups for now. And then we're going to delete that describe at the top. So we're going to get everything else. So from this, we learn that our data set has got 13 columns. We've got 14 million rows, and those are broken up into 14 row groups. Uh, we've then got a, an uncompressed size of just over three gigabytes, and then the compressed size is 850 megabytes. Okay, now let's have a look at the columns. So columns is an array of tuples. So we're gonna use the array join clause on columns. And so what that's going to do is it's going to explode out the columns array. And then we'll get, so then we'll have on each row, we'll have a tuple of the values. And then we're going to use untuple. So it's going to convert it from being a tuple to an individual uh, column, uh, as it were, in the result set. And this is what we get back. So remember, we're using vertical mode. So each column is, is, is a row uh, in this result. So we can see we've got encodings, we've got the compressed and uncompressed size, we've got compression, the types, the name. And if we scroll up, we can see it for another another column as well. Let's update our query to just return us the name, the physical type, the logical type, and the encodings. And you can see here, it's the same data, right? But it's just a bit reduced. And if we scroll up, we can see for the timestamp field, we've got a, lot, a, a physical type of int64, and then a logical type of timestamp. And then it's got a, a bunch of other metadata inside the timestamp as well. It would be quite interesting to see this in a table. So let's update that format. Uh, but actually, some of those logical types have got really, really long names. Like There's a lot of metadata in the brackets. It's going to mess up the table view. So we're just going to use a regex to replace everything in the brackets with nothing. And then we get back this nice table where we can see this is exactly what uh, metadata, uh, the, this is exactly the metadata for our Parquet file. So you can see we've got an image name, we've got the prompt, we've got the seed, the step, the width, the height, timestamp, and then uh, a few other fields as well. But now it's time for the fun stuff. It's time to look at the row groups. Now, row groups in Parquet contain some of the rows and all of the columns. And then each of those row groups has some associated metadata. And the general idea is that any query engine running against the Parquet file, if you're doing sort of filtering on the file, it can go and look at the metadata and go, ah, OK, I know that the answer is going to be only within this row group, so I can ignore all of the other ones. So let's delete everything up to our from clause. And we're going to use the array join clause that we saw earlier, but this time on row groups. And then we'll untuple the row groups. And we're just going to get one uh, of the row groups. Remember, we've got 14. We're just going to get one of them and have a look at that. And so you can see it comes back. We've got a lot of stuff under columns in there. Then we've got the uncompressed and compressed size just for this row group, the number of rows, and then the number of columns as well. Let's delete the format from the query, and we're going to wrap that previous query in a CTE. And then we're going to come down and we're going to query that CTE. We're going to join the columns that we just saw uh, using the array join function. And then we're going to get back the columns, and we're going to get back the type. So that's going to tell us the types of the things inside the tuple using the to type name function. Uh, and you can see we get back here. So this is one of the uh, one of the columns, uh, you can see it's got a name, it's got a path, compressed size, uncompressed size, and then it's also got the most interesting thing to look, notice here is the statistics. Uh, and inside the statistics, we've got the number of values, the null count, the distinct count, and then the minimum and maximum value uh, inside that, what we call a column chunk. So let's go back to our query now, and we're just going to return the name, and then we'll untuple that um, statistics tuple. Uh, and now we get back, this is for each of the columns in one row group. We can see the name, 
the number of values, the null count, the distinct count. We can see the min and the max. Those are quite interesting for, uh, for the numbers and for the timestamp. It's kind of a bit weirder when we go up a little bit and we see it for the, uh, for the string uh, values, for example, for, uh, for prompt and for image name. Uh, I'm not sure, not sure how, how useful it is uh, really there. But now, uh, hopefully after you've watched this video, you now know that the next time you have new Parquet files, you'll know how to explore them so that you can then figure out how to query them. And talking about querying them, if you like this video, you might also like this one up here, which shows how to query the actual content of Parquet files.